The new year is upon us, and I'm sure we're all excited for the upcoming content coming to Legends of Runeterra. The last set, World Walker and Darken Saga, brought us tons of new and cool things such as the Runeterran champions and of course the new card type, Equipment. But what is next? What are the next things we can see coming up for Legends of Runeterra? Well, you may not know this, but the two previous sets, the Darken Saga and the World Walker set, are actually the same set. Both are considered set 6 in the files. Which of course begs the question, what is set 7 going to be like, and what do we know about it so far? Hey everyone, the Skilled Roy here, back with another Legends of Runeterra video. So in order to investigate what's going on for the upcoming expansions, the first and most obvious thing is to look at what they've told us firsthand. We know from Riot Rubin Zoo that the first patch is going to be taking place at the very beginning of February and will include a variety of balance changes. We do not know yet if that is going to be a new expansion at that time or if it's going to be a little bit further on in February. Now based on the roadmap that they gave us, we know we are getting new original champions this year, new ways to play, which includes of course rotation, and also more expansions. While this is a really solid amount of information for the new year so far, I think we can go deeper. So let's dig into the game's files itself to start looking for information. But before we get started, the information is still very vague and up in the air still. I do not believe there's any clear answer at the moment for what champions are going to be coming next, so please do not take any of the following as a theory video like I typically do, but rather some initial investigations just to help you guys see what I'm currently seeing. Without further ado, the data reveals something very simple. Two lines in particular stand out for possible upcoming keywords. The first is specifically for set 7, and it's the keyword brash. Brash, as known by the dictionary, is self-assertive in a rude, noisy, or overbearing way. Now, that means we should look at League of Legends characters who are matching those descriptive terms, of course. And I know the first one that probably immediately popped into your head was, of course, Kiana, the Empress of Elements. She is League of Legends' master of various elemental magic, able to use stealth, freeze people in place, or of course hit a huge range with a massive stun. But is she someone that would meet the definition of the word brash? Well, uh... Just take a listen to her voice lines. You may now appreciate me. I don't mean to sound arrogant, but I'm extremely good at everything. <laughs> you only know one element? How quaint. See, even death is no match for Kiana. Of course, that is only just one possibility. You see, in Legend of Runeterra, we actually have another card that uses the name Brash, and that is, of course, the Brash Gambler card, one of Twisted Fate's followers from Bilgewater. So, who else has connections to Twisted Fate and is in Bilgewater? That is, of course, our boy Graves. Graves is one of the two remaining Bilgewater champions remaining, meaning he's extremely likely to be arriving soon. And as we saw in his cinematic with Misfortune and TF, he is absolutely brash and headstrong, having no problem bashing into a hostage situation with absolutely zero subtlety. Brash in this case might be used to showcase his straightforward combat style, along with any followers he might have in his typical heist crew. There is one problem, however, for me to lock this in place, and that's the other Bilgewater champion? They could also be seen as being possibly Brash, and that is Neela, the Joy Unbound. She is infamous for being extremely boisterous in her various voice lines, which you can also hear here. Bring me more foes to defeat. Prepare yourself. Joy will not falter. How many times must I embarrass you, Malcolm Graves? She literally travels the world to fight giant monsters all over Runeterra, and that fervor that she demonstrates while doing so could in some way be the perfect descriptor for the word Brash. Now those are just three of the many possible options for Brash, but that wasn't the only keyword that I found in the files. Additionally, I found another file labeled not for set 7, but rather for set 8. This one is also quite evocative. It was the keyword named Deathless. Now, this might seem rather easy from the initial thought, but there's actually an entire region in the game devoted to characters effectively resisting death, so it's going to be a lot harder to go through. But let's start with the most obvious one. One of the champions who, in League of Legends anyways, has the ability to keep on casting even after he's been killed, and that is of course Karthus, the Death Singer. While many might know him more from his pentakill appearances as the lead singer there, in the League of Legends canon lore, he exists not in death or life, but on the threshold between them, thus making him a perfect candidate for a deathless keyword. 
But of course, Deathless could not just refer to Karthus, but it could refer to a type of character who has come back from death and is now Deathless. One in particular I feel that matches the description quite well, and is obviously a huge fan favorite, well beloved and feared, and that is of course Mordekaiser the Iron Revenant. Mordekaiser is a master of death, a character who has found a way to resurrect himself by taking his soul and placing it into his armor, allowing him to continue to exist in the physical world. Not to mention, whenever he kills someone, they become bound to him, conscripted into his army instead of simply dying. This is a possible way to make followers that are also considered deathless. Now speaking of deathless followers, I would be remiss not to remember Yorick Mori. Yorick is our favorite shovel-wielding gravekeeper who uses an army of zombies to attempt to find a way to reverse the ruination that destroyed the Blessed Isles. He himself was one of the only people who were spared from the ruination thanks to the vial around his neck that contained powerful waters of life. This act of being the sole survivor of a massive ruination event might play into his own abilities and, honestly, could be described as being deathless. Furthermore, thanks to his ability to summon and control the dead, they could also be considered as deathless, and therefore making it another solid option for this possible keyword. But of course, these are just the basic options. Who do you think is going to represent the keywords of deathless and brash? Please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to keep all possible options open in my mind as we come closer to the next set. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Thanks and peace out.